big question, big picture question, just to kind of get us us warmed up. Um, you know, there's been a whole bunch of alternative fuel options to get us off of uh, oil, the oil economy, and get us onto uh, renewables or clean tech. You know, especially relates to transportation. You know, hydrogen fuel cells, natural gas. Of course, the whole hybrid mu movement, which seems to continue to get traction and Volt. Uh, Chevy Volt has a little bit of a twist on the, the technology. What's convinced you that pure electric and the, the infrastructure behind it is the best way to go? Um, I actually went down every single one of those paths. When we started, we didn't, it wasn't like I, I, I was sitting at SAP and I said, oh, I have this idea for a battery switch. What are we going to do with it? Um, it was actually the exact opposite direction. And I started from the question, as you said, how do you get a country off of oil? And as it started, translating into the micro, because at the macro level is such a daunting question, most people say it's never going to happen. When I went to the micro question, um, the single individual consumer, it became obvious that the question is, uh, has to, you, you cannot expect people to change behavior in mass. Positive, but it's, the answer was different than anybody else, was that a consumer comes into the market, be it a single dealership or eBay or you know, Craigslist, doesn't matter, you, you go to the market, and you buy the car that's the most convenient and cheapest you can afford. Um, and then you're willing to drive, you're willing to pay as much as gasoline to drive it. Which sounds sort of a no-brainer until you figure out every alternative energy program went the exact opposite direction. Right? You, you were told, well, you can give up two seats. Why, why do you need, there's no need for a back seat, right? Two seats is enough. Or you don't need to drive fast. Or this thing can only go 50 miles and you have to start coming back. Um, or, you know, if you're stuck on the freeway, you know, six hours is not bad, it's Starbucks, right? And you, you, you start telling people, give up on convenience, or pay a lot more, or both, right? And then the justification was, you'll pay for it with total cost of ownership calculations over 12 years, you'll pay back for the extra cost. And most consumers, when they come into a dealership, they don't know what total cost of ownership means. Um, they know this is expensive, and that is cheap. And so they buy the cheap one and they figure out, you know, sooner or later I'll figure out what's, what's right, what's wrong. And they get addicted on that day. They make one decision, it's a $20,000 decision, and then every week they come to the oil gods and they pay them 40 bucks. And they, they just got addicted and they forget, no, nobody showed them that asterisk at the bottom that said, every week we'll take a bit of your money and we'll burn it. And we can't promise you how much it will be, but it will be more. And I, we turned around and we said it has to be cheaper and it has to be more convenient. And the convenience factor was the really hard part. The convenience factor was, um, and I drive, I, you know, when I'm in the valley, I drive an electric car and I realize that you need two charge spots, one at home and one at work. Is that sort of the trip you do when you don't have a life? And most of us really don't have a life. And, and so um, you do that trip and you can connect either way, right? Because most of and so. On that trip, it's sort of a 30, 40 mile distance, and you need to cover three trips like that on the battery. And, and three is really a magic number, because um, if, you, if you can only do it once, then you're really stuck. You have to plug on both ends or you're stuck. If you do it twice, you still need to plug on both ends, because just a bit of distance, um, and you're not making it from work to, from home to work in the morning if you came with your gym bag and you forgot to, to plug it. Three times is sort of a magic number. You can decide where you want to play, home, work, and you sort of have the, the luxury of doing that. Um, and with a switch, with the ability to go into a station and switch your battery in a minute and keep going, you really, you don't have any more range anxiety. And convenience is really how many times do I get into the switch? And it ends up that if you count your long trips, the, the Tahoe trip, right, the skiing trip, how many times you do those in a year, it ends up being about, you know, 15, 20, if, you're, if you have a life. And if you stop once on the way and once on the way back, it ends up about, about 40 switches, which is what you do with a normal gas station. You stop about once every week. So it's, if you stop 40 times a year, 20 times a year, it's sort of more convenient than what you do with gas in the car. Mm -hmm. So that locked us on the technical spec. We had to have a switch that worked really fast. And Fuji here has the first switch in the world that is in Tokyo that works in 59.1 second. Um, then we ended up with a question of price. You know, there, there must be a Tesla owner here, or a former Tesla owner. Um, 
So, so you can't ask a hundred thousand dollars. It's a fantastic car. It's a beautiful car. And if, if you get a chance and you you have the money, go buy it, and, and you'll it's a thorough joy to drive it. Um, but you can't expect to tip the market on hundred thousand dollars. You can't even expect to tip the market on forty thousand dollars because. On the Gaussian curve of cars we buy, we're the exception, but 99% of people don't go beyond the $20,000, $25,000. So you had to hit, we, we basically figured out, the Prius was about $3,500 more expensive than the average sedan, and it only generated in 13 years about 2% market share. So we had to go $3,500 cheaper, we'll do 98% market share. 